The science behind dramatically better conversations. Have you ever walked away from a conversation feeling unfulfilled? Like you exchanged words, but didn't really connect. It's as if you're having the same conversations over and over, talking but not truly communicating. You laugh, nod, and share updates, but something's missing. Deep down, you know the difference between a conversation that passes time and one that changes everything. The kind of conversation that sticks with you for days. But here's a little secret. Meaningful conversations don't happen by accident. There's an art to them, a science even. And if you're tired of having shallow, forgettable exchanges, then get ready, because today, I'm going to show you how to make every conversation count. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to move beyond small talk and turn ordinary interactions into moments of real connection. Whether it's with a friend, family member, or even a stranger, you'll have the tools to make people feel heard, valued, and understood. And here's the bold part. I'm going to challenge you to ask someone a question that might make you a little uncomfortable, one that has the power to unlock a connection like you've never experienced before. Sound intriguing? Stick with me and let's dive in. Part one, why we struggle to connect. Let's face it, while we're living in a time where communication has never been easier, real connection is harder to find. We're constantly texting, scrolling through social media, and attending virtual meetings. Yet, despite all of this connection, we often feel more isolated than ever. The truth is, most of our conversations never go beyond the surface. Why? Because we've been conditioned to keep things safe. Small talk, pleasantries, updates about work or the weather, these are our comfort zones. We avoid anything that feels too deep or too personal because, let's be honest, it can feel risky. What if we say the wrong thing? What if the other person isn't interested in going deeper? What if we get vulnerable and it gets awkward? This fear of being judged, rejected, or even just facing an uncomfortable silence keeps us stuck in conversations that skim the surface. But staying in this comfort zone comes with a cost, disconnection. It's why so many of us feel lonely, even when we're constantly communicating. But if we can learn to push through that fear, if we can be bold enough to venture beyond small talk, that's where the magic happens. Real connection requires stepping outside of what feels safe and diving into what feels real. And it starts with understanding why we avoid it in the first place. Part two, the layers of every conversation. Think of a conversation like an onion. It has layers. The outermost layer is where most of us stay, but the deeper layers? That's where true connection is found. So let's break it down. Layer one, the basics. This is the surface level, the how's it going? What did you do today? How's work? Kind of stuff. We all know this space. It's easy, familiar, and non-threatening. But let's be honest, conversations that stay in this layer are the ones we forget as soon as they're over. Layer two, the feels now we're getting somewhere. This is the layer where emotions come into play. Instead of just sharing what happened, you start sharing how you felt about it. I had a really tough day at work versus, I had a meeting today. Do you feel the difference? The first statement invites empathy and connection, while the second is just a fact. Layer three, the identity zone. This is the core, the deepest layer of any conversation. It's where you talk about who you are, your dreams, your beliefs, your fears. Conversations in this zone are rare, but they're also the ones that leave a lasting impact. These are the moments that build bonds, whether you're discussing your biggest insecurities or sharing your wildest ambitions. So here's the secret to better conversations. Don't settle for layer one. Push yourself and the other person into layer two and eventually layer three. Because the deeper you go, the more meaningful your conversation will be. Part three, vulnerability, the secret weapon. Let's talk about vulnerability. In a world where everyone is trying to appear like they have it all together, vulnerability is rare, but it's also incredibly powerful. We often associate vulnerability with weakness, sharing our struggles, admitting we don't have all the answers, or expressing doubt. But here's the truth. Vulnerability is strength. It's the doorway to connection. When you allow yourself to be vulnerable in a conversation, you're not only opening yourself up, but you're also inviting the other person to do the same. It creates an atmosphere of trust, 
It says, I'm human, you're human. Let's be real with each other. I'll never forget a conversation I had during a particularly challenging time in my life. I was feeling lost, unsure about my next steps, and scared of what the future held. Normally, I would have kept those feelings to myself. But one day, I decided to share how I was really feeling with a friend. To my surprise, she didn't just listen. She opened up about her own struggles, and we connected on a level we never had before. That moment taught me something invaluable. Vulnerability isn't a weakness, it's a bridge. The more you're willing to share, your insecurities, your fears, your hopes, the more others will feel comfortable doing the same. And that's when conversations move from superficial to unforgettable. Part four, ask better questions, get better answers. Here's a simple but powerful truth. If you want better conversations, you need to ask better questions. Most people stick to safe, predictable questions like, how's it going, or what's up? But these questions lead to predictable, shallow answers. If you want to unlock a meaningful conversation, you have to ask questions that invite depth. Try asking, what's something you've been thinking about a lot lately? What's a challenge you've faced recently that you're proud of overcoming? What's something you're excited about in the next few months? These questions don't just gather information. They invite people to share their feelings, their stories, their inner world. And that's where real connection is born. But remember, the key isn't just in the question. It's in how you listen to the answer. Part 5. The Power of Emotional Mirroring Here's one of the most powerful tools in any conversation. Emotional mirroring. It's the practice of matching the emotional tone of the person you're speaking with. If they're excited, you reflect that excitement. If they're feeling down, you show empathy. Emotional mirroring isn't about pretending to feel what they feel. It's about showing that you understand where they're coming from. When someone expresses frustration, instead of brushing it off or giving advice, you might say, that sounds really tough. How are you dealing with it? This simple act of mirroring their emotions creates a sense of validation. They feel heard, understood, and supported. And the science backs it up. People are more likely to open up when they feel that their emotions are being recognized and validated. Part six, the power of silence. Silence. It's one of the most underused tools in communication, and yet it's one of the most powerful. Most of us rush to fill any gap in conversation, afraid of awkward pauses. But sometimes, silence can do what words cannot. When you ask a meaningful question, don't rush to fill the silence. Give the other person time to think. Let the quiet sit for a moment. In that space, people often reveal things they wouldn't have shared otherwise. It's in those moments of reflection that deeper thoughts and emotions rise to the surface. And here's the surprising thing. Silence often invites more vulnerability. When you're not rushing to speak, the other person feels safe to share more. So next time you find yourself in a pause, embrace it. Let the silence work its magic. Part seven, bringing it all together, make it happen. Now that you have these tools, vulnerability, asking better questions, emotional mirroring, and embracing silence, it's time to put them into practice. The next time you're in a conversation, be intentional. Push beyond the surface. Don't settle for small talk when you could be building a deeper connection. Start by asking one of those deeper questions we talked about earlier. Push the conversation into layer two or layer three. And when you feel that familiar fear creeping in, the fear of saying something too personal or too real, remember this, that's exactly where the magic happens. And here's the fun part. Don't just try this with people you already know. Try it with strangers too. Whether it's a barista, a coworker, or someone you meet at an event, people are often more open to meaningful conversations than you think. All it takes is a little boldness. Remember that bold question I mentioned at the beginning? Here it is. When was the last time you felt truly heard? Try asking it in your next conversation. It might feel a little uncomfortable at first, but trust me, the connection it creates will be worth it. Conclusion. Your conversations can change everything. Conversations have the power to change your relationships, your life, and even your perspective on the world. By embracing vulnerability, asking deeper questions, practicing emotional mirroring, and using the power of silence, 
you'll be able to transform ordinary interactions into moments of genuine connection. So, are you ready to have better conversations? To go beyond the surface and connect in ways that matter? It's time to make every conversation count 